verse 6, I'm going to read this to you. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. As a matter of fact, I want y'all to turn there. Can you turn there? Because some of y'all ain't read it in a little while. Romans 8, 14. And y'all can repeat after me when you get there. Amen. Everybody there? Amen. For as many... As are, led as are led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. They, are they are the sons of God. The sons of God. And then, so I want you to understand that now the reason why I call it Tony's heretical moment is because it's those scriptures that I just shared with you are easily twisted and taken out of context. Amen. So I don't want you to run around, Brother Casey, and be like Rakim and run around Amen. telling people I'm God. Amen. <laughs> because that's not the purpose of the scripture. And one of the reasons, and I always like this old Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier story to explain why you don't run around telling people that you're God. Because one time Muhammad Ali was fighting Joe Frazier and fighting Joe Frazier. It looked like he was beating Joe Frazier. And he was telling Joe Frazier, you can't beat me. I'm God. I'm God. You can't beat me. I'm God. Then Joe Frazier hit him with a right cross and said, I just knocked, I just knocked God right on his you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it knocked him right down. And that's one of the reasons why you should never start talking and saying that you're God. Amen. Because of the fallibility of your flesh. Your flesh is very fallible. But the reason why Psalms 82 and the Gospels and also Paul says as many as are led. Can we say as are led? As are led. Those people who are led by the Holy Spirit, you can never forget that divinity that God lives within you. And you should never take that short-sightedly. That the capability and the power of God lives within you. And many of us, we don't believe that anymore. We don't really, really believe that the power of God lives within us. And that's why we stay fearful. That's why we don't go and pursue what God has told us to pursue. That's why we get in ruts. That's why we don't do what God has called us to do. That's why we live like the first type of the impossible people instead of the second type. Because we see our own flaws and we see our own inadequacies and we focus on that rather than focusing on what the scriptures say that you are. I want everyone at the hill to really fully ingest this and get it. Do you believe, what do you believe more? What you say about yourself or what God says about you? What do you believe more? Because you will tell you that you're a loser. You will tell you that you're a liar. You will tell you that you are too stupid. You will tell you that you can't do this and can't do that and I can't do this and I can't do that. Or I don't matter, or I don't count, or I can't, or I'll push this off to the next day, or I'll keep procrastinating on that. You tell you a bunch of lies. And the devil uses your flesh to feed you a bunch of lies. And he occasionally uses my flesh to feed me a bunch of lies. But God, God speaks about you in a different way. God says, I have imparted to you the best of myself. Even in creation, I have made you in my image and my likeness. You fell short and that glass was broken. It was not perfect, but Jesus restored it. And you have got to begin to believe what God says about you. We go and we fully and easily accept so much crap about ourselves. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor? Neighbor. The devil, the devil is, a liar. is a liar. And the devil will go and speak to you and tell you all of these self-defeating things. God has put so much before you, and he put these things before you for you to destroy it, not for it to destroy you. And the questions I want to ask you is, why are you not solving it? Can you go to the next slide, Miss Kim? Something before you right now that you know you're supposed to do and you're not doing it. 
And God did not put it before you for you to be defeated. Turn to your neighbor and just, and I want you to touch your neighbor in the arm and say, neighbor, neighbor. God has not called you, God has not called you to defeat. To defeat. Amen. He has not called you to be defeated. You do not have to end your story the way the world wants you to end your story. Amen. You do not have to end your story the way in a negative narrative. You are an impossible person, but not the negative type. You are an impossible person that God has given you the ability to do the impossible. Isn't it a shame that I play that video and most of us would be too terrified to do any of that stuff? Amen? Most of us would be too terrified. Most of us would be too, ter too terrified to even try. But we call ourselves the sons and daughters of God. Really? Do we believe what God says about us? Or do we believe the narrative that has been given to us? What is your name? What is your name? What is your name? Why aren't you accomplishing what God put before you to accomplish? Is it distractions? When you know by God what is important, you will not be distracted. You get distracted because your priorities are screwed up in your flesh. But when God rearranges your priorities, you say, I'm going to get this Bible study in no matter what. I'm going to get my prayer time in no matter what. I'm going to go and put God first place no matter what. If I am on the job and God says that I'm going to be a witness on the job, then while I'm there, I'm going to be a witness no matter what. And I'm going to put, can we all say first thing? First thing. First. 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 But so many times we've got the world upside down where we put all these other things important other than the main thing. And when we do that, that's why we don't get things done and we don't get accomplished what God has called us to get accomplished. Distractions is number one. Can we say distractions? Distractions. We've already covered lies. God tells you, excuse me, the devil. Tells you all kind of lies about yourself. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do this. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at this. When's the last time you really tried? When's the last time you really tried? You know, what's amazing is that people, I put this on a text, and, it, and it's so true. People, the same folks, the same folks that will tell me I can't read the Bible with so many V's and dials in it. They will go and send me a text with, oh, my God, OMG, LOL, and then LLS. You know what I'm saying? They'll send me, and so they got all this text language figured out, and I'm reading these texts. And I'm like, what in the world are they saying? I can't, you know, because they got all this other text. So, the fundamental thing I get from that is you can understand what you want to understand. Amen. You understand what you want to understand. You don't understand the these and that's because you've got no hunger for God's word. Amen. So you understand what you, when your mind is made up, mm -hmm. you can do what you want to do. And we are so complacent that we think that, oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. You know what's amazing to me? How people go, the same folks who will go and get their college education late at night and get their master's and get their PhD and stay up late at night to get something done. Those same folks, when I've been at other churches, they will go and say, I'm too tired to come to Bible study. You ain't too tired for DeVry. You're not too tired for University of Phoenix. You're not too tired for all the other stuff. You're tired for the things of God because you don't see the immediate return. And you don't see the immediate return because you're ignorant of God's ways. But you're going to run after the world and then surprise, 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 the world will not sustain you. Now you got your master's degree and guess what? You're still unemployed during the recession. You're still unemployed during the recession because you really don't know what's really the most important thing. Many of us, it's just pure laziness. We know the right thing to do, and that's what I struggle with sometimes, is pure laziness. 
And that is an abuse of your relationship with God. Because when you know and you have a relationship with an all-powerful God, sometimes it's just too easy to cop out and say, Daddy's going to jump in there for me. I didn't do all the preparation that I'm supposed to do. Amen. I didn't do all that I'm supposed to do, but I know Daddy's going to jump in on me. Daddy's going to save the day. And Daddy sometimes will say, no, 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 no. A good daddy says, no, 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 no. You made your bed, now you lying. You didn't do the possible, so why are you asking me to do the impossible? Amen? Because for God, there's nothing that's impossible. Many of us, we allow fears. We're scared of this false evidence appearing real. We allow our mind to freak out and go places that God never intended it to go. And the devil will go and he abuses your fears to keep you in a little box. To keep you in a little box. You know why? Because as long as you're scared, you can't do nothing for nobody else. As long as you're terrified. As long as you're scared to try something new. As long as you're scared to get out of your shell. Then guess what? You remain dependent on other people. You know... <laughs> I, part of, it was a trick, because part of the thing, my dad was so tight with the money that he, as a young child, he didn't want me touching the washer or the dryer or anything else, because he would always say, Tony, you're going to break it, you know, and, uh, you know, and so, he, so as a, as a result of that, because he was so tight with the money that I didn't touch anything because I was always scared that I was going to break it, and if I broke a $400 washing machine or whatever else, I know that I would ne never hear the end of it. So when I went to go live with my brother, my brother, I, you know, let me give my brother props. My brother kind of cut me because my brother said, I ain't going to do your dirty drawers. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go and do your dirty. I'm not, I'm not going to touch that stuff. I'm going to allow you to do the possible for yourself. Amen. Amen. So guess what? I got acquainted with a washer. I got acquainted with a dryer. I got acquainted with a dishwasher. Amen. And I had to do the possible for myself. And guess what? I have not broken a washer and dryer yet. <laughs> Amen? But at 15, 16 years old, I was scared of breaking something because I, my dad was so big about doing it. He said, no, let me do it. Amen? But, oh, man, I felt free after I was freed from the fear. A lot of people can't even learn a computer. Why can't they learn the computer? Because they're scared they're going to what? Break it. Break something. And you know how hard it's going to be for you to break a computer? It's very hard for you to break a computer, but you won't touch it because you're scared. And you remain ignorant because you're scared. And guess what they said? This is really intelligent guy said in the 20, he said in the 21st century, the true ignorant are those who will not relearn, unlearn, and learn again. And for those, for those who are scared to learn new things, you might as well just quit working right now and collect your welfare check. Because here's the thing, everything on your job is going to get more and more automated. And everything on your job, every database, so if you, and matter of fact, as soon as you learn one database, guess what? It's going to be time for another database. So if you go and get there and you start, yeah, I'm scared, then guess what? You're going to be unemployed quickly. I love my daddy, but he, he loved teaching. And he allowed fear of a computer to push him into retirement. And he loved passionately teaching. But when they made lessons, lesson plans computerized, he just, he said, no, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm too old. I don't want to learn nothing new. <laughs> and he was forced into retirement. But he wasn't forced into retirement by the system, Brother Don. He was forced into retirement by his own stubbornness and unwillingness to learn something new. Are you going to be put in a box because you're scared to learn something new? Because as you get put in more of these little boxes, one day it's the devil setting you up for your last box, mm -hmm. which is the grave. Mm -hmm. And in 2 Timothy 1 and 7 it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound.